right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, and welcome to, the, to today's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California. You can find the Commonwealth Club um, on the internet at thecommonwealthclub.org. I'm Michael Mina, and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I'll be your moderator today. Um, today's program is part of the Commonwealth Club's Food Lit series, underwritten by, Bernard o by the Bernard Osher Foundation. And our special guest, which is a very special guest, <laughs> um, is Aisha Curry. <laughs> Um, Aisha Curry, um, Aisha is Food Network host of Aisha's Homemade, author of newly published book, The Seasons of the Seasoned Life, um, Food, Family, Faith, and the Joy of Eating Well. Um, I'm very proud to, this is, uh, Aisha and me have now spent um, months and months together in kitchens and getting to know each other and get, really getting to be good, um, close friends and colleagues but today's the first time that we've been able to do something like this, so thank you, Aisha, and welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we're both super nervous, so. <laughs> um, so we're, I'm just gonna start with a few questions, and um, we'll kind of let this lead into, I'm sure, something that will be very fun and exciting throughout the day. Um, so my first question is, you know, um, a little bit about your background, and okay. growing up in Toronto, uh, moving to North Carolina, then to the Bay Area. What was your childhood like? So my childhood was pretty consistent, if that makes any sense. Um, I spent majority of my childhood in Toronto. I was born there. I lived there until I was 14. Moved to North Carolina for my high school years. Um, and now uh, my husband and our two girls and I are out here in the Bay, and we love it. We call the Bay Area our home now. Um, but I feel like... We're very blessed here with um, all of the food that's available to us and all of the, the produce and the, just the freshness of everything. It's very different. Even my mom and my sister are here um, today. G let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but even I, I think they can vouch for me. The difference between a grocery store in North Carolina and a grocery store here in the Bay is so different. I feel like the produce is much fresher. There's more of everything, um, and I personally think it's even more affordable because it's right here in our backyards, um, so we feel very blessed. But growing up in Toronto, I feel like it's where my palate was shaped and where I learned everything because it's a big cultural melting pot there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm rambling. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've obviously, I've had the pl privilege of meeting your mother and your father, and... Um, spending some time with them, how you know how how did they influence you and in what you've now started to take on? Not just in obviously in the food world, but also in your life and your family. Um, they have had the biggest influence. Uh, I have a pretty diverse background. My mom is Jamaican and Chinese, and my dad is Polish, African American, um, and so I feel like from a food standpoint. Um, I was eating all sorts of different things growing up, stuff I liked, stuff I didn't like, but I was always willing to try. Um, and ever since I can remember, I was with my mom cooking in the kitchen just the way I do with my daughter today. Um, and so I feel like that shaped my love of food. I feel like it's, we were always in the kitchen, um, regardless of what was going on. If we were eating or not, we were in there, uh, which I'm sure some of you can relate to. And so I feel like my joy for food and for cooking just stemmed from, from childhood, from both of my parents. My dad cooked as well growing up, um, and so I feel like I had no other choice but to love it. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, just the idea of a career in the culinary world. Um, obviously, um, I've been around many chefs over the years, and you know, there, it, it's interesting because so many chefs have so many different paths to get to um, being a chef or being in the, just in the culinary arts. And, um, you know, I know my path started with, uh, my parents having one direction that they wanted me to go. Um, I, you know, had a different idea and that was, that was to be a chef. 
Um, did you, uh, what, and I know, I kind of know the answer to this, but I think everybody should hear it. Um, did, was, uh, was, you know, the pursuit of a culinary um, career at the beginning or did it come a little later? It definitely uh, came a lot later. Um, I grew up, since I was two years old, I'd been acting, and so that's kind of what I, what I did growing up. Other kids were playing sports, I was at an audition. Um, and so that's all I thought I knew how to do, even though I was cooking every day at home. And so once I got to be a grown up, an adult, I realized I didn't actually really enjoy it. Um, I didn't like the process and I didn't enjoy the journey, whereas there was hundreds of thousands of other girls that enjoyed that and wanted it way more than I did. And so I wanted to make a career shift and you know, sat back and tried to figure out, well, what, <laughs> what do I do? Who am I? Where am I going? What do I want to be? Um, and it wasn't until shortly after having my first daughter um, that my husband actually shed light on the fact that everybody was always asking for my recipes and enjoyed my cooking and that I loved to do it so much. So my passion was staring me in the face all these years. I just didn't know that I could make a career out of it. And so I jumped right in, um, started my blog and haven't stopped uh, since, since that very first day. I think it was February, February 12th, 2000. 12 or something like that. <laughs> um, and so I, I love it. I feel like my journey has been very different. Um, for the longest time, I didn't call myself a chef, but Michael kind of took me under his wing and he's been teaching me everything I need to know. Um, he, uh, and now I, I have the confidence I need. Um, and I, I told him one day, I was like, I'm going to, I really want to go to culinary school. I'm going to, I'm going to go to culinary school. This was like two months ago, by the way. It's very recent. Uh, <laughs> and he was like, no, you're not going to culinary school. He's like, you have the best, the best school here. And so I've, I've been learning under him and all of his wonderful staff. Um, and it's, it's very interesting now because whenever I go into International Smoke, they're like, do you want your jacket, chef? Yes, chef. We, oui, chef. I'm like, oh, okay. I can get used to this. So I really do love it. <laughs> That's great. Um, well, I think that, you know, obviously the acting, um, it, you know, I, and um, anybody who spends any time around you watches you walk into any room and you light up the room and, you're, you know, your personality being... Being as um, you know, just as as warm and outgoing as it is, and I think the, the best part of getting to know you and getting to know your family is the humility. It just blows me away every time I spend any time at all with you or with your family. Is everybody is just so easy, just so easygoing, and um, and you know, my wife recently got to spend a little time with you filming one of the segments for your new show, and. Diane came back and said exactly the same thing. I didn't, I, I didn't say a word to her. She's just like, it was so much more relaxing than I thought it was going to be. And um, I would say to you that for me, I've, I've stayed away from television for the most part. I mean, I've done it, but it, it, it is so much harder for me to spend time in front of a camera. If I spend two hours in front of a camera doing, filming a segment, I'm exhausted for the day. I could spend 20 hours straight in the kitchen <laughs> and, and it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I, and so now I think that obviously your show that's about, it's, a, it's about to air in- October 22nd. Uh, ooh, and, <laughs> yes. Can you tell us a little about that experience and how, you know, the, Maybe, obviously, maybe first it was the acting for you. That part might have been easier yeah. than actually the other half. Yeah, I feel like it's it's weird how God, like God works in mysterious ways because all of the things that I spent so many years doing didn't go in the trash can. I still <laughs> am able to use, use um, those skills that I learned growing up um, with the show, which is really nice. Um, but I feel like it was the best way for me to send out my message on a bigger scale. Um, of just food and family and the fact that food brings people together. It makes them feel things. And um, by involving everybody, you build relationships. So on the show, um, whenever I'm cooking, somebody comes in and they're cooking with me. Whether they like it or not, they get a job. <laughs> Whether it's chopping something up, washing the dishes, um, which is the best job to delegate to somebody else, by the way. <laughs> um, but they're, I mean, it's, it's just... Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, 
but at the same time, I wanted the food to be easy uh, because I cook for people with families. My message is for people with, with families and friends and for people that want to cook at home. And so everything's quick and easy and straight to the point. Um, so I think, I hope you guys are going to like it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will. So you, 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 know, you obviously touched upon it, but now I'm, gonna, now I'm just going to come right out and ask it. So of these three you know, helpers at home that help you cook, <laughs> um, um, yeah, who's the most helpful? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely Riley. <laughs> Uh, uh -oh. I'm just being honest. God. <laughs> Stefan's really good at eating. I'll say that. No, he's he's gotten a lot better though, especially since the books come out. He's taken it upon himself to to try new things from it and to experiment wow. and he's been relatively successful, so that's been cool. I know if I'm ever like exhausted one day, I can like delegate to him to cook dinner and it'll it'll be fine. Everybody <laughs> will live. Um, <laughs> But, but Riley helps me so much. Um, and it's the same, it's like what I did with my mom growing up. So it's really special to me. Um, and now that I have my new career, life's gotten really busy and hectic. And so it's the perfect opportunity for me to slow down with her, be able to teach her what I know and um, for her kitchen skills to, um, to grow and for her to have kitchen confidence. Um, and uh, it's just been great to share what, with what I shared with my mom um, all my life with her. It's, it's really cool. It's a great way to bond. Um, and it's a great way to instill from a young age, um, the love of food. So then when she gets older, she, she wants to go cook herself a meal or her boyfriend a meal or whoever it might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. I, um, uh, I, I don't think I actually ever even told you this, but when, um, when my boys, when Sammy and Anthony were young, um, I was I, the one show that I did want to do was a show about cooking with kids, mm. and because I cooked with them all the time, and you know it was really interesting. Um, at the beginning, it was a little bit of a struggle because you you know you you feel like you just want to grab whatever they're doing and then and then just do it, and um, and after a little while, I figured out that you know a big part of the problem of what we what I was doing was. Um, I didn't really, you know, like when you're setting up a kitchen, you set up a kitchen for yourself. I never really set up the kitchen for, you know, uh, my kids that were, you know, uh, young, two and, and six at the time. And so then when he started like, you know, having them work on TV trays instead of putting them standing on something where, and I, you know, it's like, a, I just kind of thought about it. If, you know, standing on a milk crate myself and trying to use a knife or do anything, it's not, it's not gonna work out. Yeah. But it is amazing how much you can get your children involved at a young age if you kind of set the kitchen up in a way where it's easy for them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's a, it's a great reflection also of like implementing life skills uh, into them at a young age. It's, it's giving them confidence because when they accomplish something as small as like, pouring that cup of flour into the mixing bowl. Like they feel like they've accomplished something. And so I feel like it's instilling positivity in them from a young age, even though it's something so simple. Um, and at the end of the day, like the messes can be cleaned up. It's fine. You're having fun. You're building memories. And so that's my whole, that's my whole message. We'll clean up the mess later. Let's have some fun. Right. Yeah. That, that's great. <laughs> that's great. And uh, I think um, um, both, both my boys went to Montessori. Yeah. And, they, you know, and in school they did a lot. They did a lot of it, um, just of the same type of hands-on. Yeah, mine do too. Mine go to Montessori. Yeah. Um, so I want to touch on <laughs> something that you, I think um, You're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so you were. So you're talking about about Stefan cooking. Yeah. And I and um, and um, I know that one of the things that. Uh, um, <laughs> when, uh, when we were talking about knives, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and, and, um, and I'd got you that set of knives and Stefan told me, he said that he, you know, went to use the knife and I said, you stay away from those knives. <laughs> the last thing I need is yes. you to cut yourself with a knife that I got. He was like, the Bay Area will hate me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll ban my restaurants. <laughs> like, you cannot get cut with those knives. <laughs> stay away from them. <laughs> um, so 
to talk a little bit about your book. Um, yeah, I'd love to. And, and I think that, you know, that's probably, um, I, I honestly, now I've, I've read it twice, cover to cover, um, and, and I, the thing that I would tell you impresses me the most about it, and it, it's interesting because um, we've actually been cooking together before I got to see the book, and, um, and then getting to see the book and understanding kind of the style in, um, in which you cook and the philosophies behind the book and the philosophies behind the food and life and how it, how, you know, the balance and how it all works together. Um, I, you know, I, I would say that there's probably three or four takeaways that just really impressed me about how the book was put together. And the first one is just kind of, it's actually kind of funny in, in a way, but it was something that um, I said, you know, uh, it, it was interesting in the sense that you actually, the titles that you gave many of the dishes were really fun, very playful and whimsical and things that we would, you know, we would have fun with in a restaurant, but like um, ridiculously easy carrot salad, right? <laughs> um, to me, I just thought that, that I, I just love the spirit in which, you know, it, it immediately, like when I read a menu or read a book, and, you know, that's probably, you know, I've probably read 2,000 cookbooks or something <laughs> in my life over my life's time, and, and you can always tell a lot about a person when you read, when you read their book. And, you know, the playfulness, I think, that's in the book and the spirit in the book and kind of um, power coffee, I mean, um, fragrant lamb burgers, just the, the, the names, the titles of the dishes are, they're really, they make the food very appetizing. They make you want to eat it and they want, make you want to experiment and cook it. Um, do you spend much time thinking about that when you're thinking about food of what, what you would call it? Yeah, absolutely. I think I just go off like, I'm really straight to the point, and so like that carrot salad really is ridiculously easy. <laughs> it's like it's like one of those things where I'm like, am I really putting this in there? But it's something, <laughs> it's something that somebody at home might not have thought of, and it's a time saver, and it can be made ahead, and it's great, and it sits in the fridge, and it gets better as it sits in there. And so I wanted to put it in because I I felt like it was ridiculously easy, and everybody needed to know that. Um, uh. But yeah, I don't I. The lamb burgers, they're super fragrant. There's all sorts of spices in there. And so it's like always to the point, kind of kitschy, but mm -hmm. still to the point. And so um, you eat with your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted everything to, to look good um, and sound really good as well. Um, so yeah. Um, and it's funny what you say about you eat with your eyes. That w that's probably the second thing that I really um, was impressed with in the book is the the simplicity in you know you definitely i and i actually obviously know your food outside of just the cookbook but the food when you read it when you read the recipes when you read the dishes um they sound you know so approachable so easy but when you look at the plating you do a great job of actually simple doing you know like for us for chefs we always overcomplicate everything nine times out of ten but but you you've done like the the food in the book is beautiful the the plating of it and just even Thank like you. the the yogurt parfait things like that it's just the style you, you have a certain style about what you're doing that really actually speaks to simplicity but it comes across as actually very elegant um Thank you. i don't know how much you thought you put into that i put a, i put a lot of thought into that um you you <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? I did. <laughs> so you even told me the way you cook at, at your restaurants and the way you cook at home is completely different. Right. Um, and and I feel like food at home should be simple and it should be approachable. And so I am really proud to say I take pride in this that I for the book I cooked every single um, recipe in that book for the photographs and I food styled it and so it was just me and the photographer. There were a couple of days where we had some help, um, like a, a, a girl or two there to help um, just to make sure everything was running smoothly um, and for a second set of eyes. But I honestly did it all by myself um, because I so often g get a cookbook um, that's supposed to be easy and approachable, and it's not. The pictures themselves are intimidating. Um, 
And I feel like there's a difference between when you're buying something to cook at home and when you're buying a cookbook to like ogle over the beautiful photographs and the intricate recipes. For me, I wanted it to be approachable and easy, so I made sure that every single photograph in the book, it's it, when you make it at home, that's what it's gonna look like. I didn't want any surprises. And so while some people might be like, dang, that's a mess, like, this, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's gonna look like when you make it at home. <laughs> so I didn't use any like, I didn't use any oil sprays or water sprays to make things glisten. I just wanted them to be what they were. Um, and so I guarantee you when you make it at home, if you follow the directions properly, <laughs> That's what it's going to look like. That's great. <laughs> um, one of the one of um, the chefs that uh, that I studied under um, used to always tell me that his uh, used to always say to me, "The best ingredient is the one you leave off," <laughs> and it, and it's like resonated with me all my all of my career. I've always thought about that, and um, and that's what I saw in your book. It was like, you know, if it's br if it's brown sugar bacon. That's what it is. It's like it's yeah. it's to the point. The food is to the point. And um, but having said that, that doesn't mean, you know, I, I, it, that always kind of confused me. It was one of these things that always was in my head when I was cooking. And um, and I am a person that really likes bold flavored food. I like food that's, you know, high in acid, high in sweet, high in spice, um, high in richness. And it's all about like how you balance it. And I think that 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 was something that the first time that you and me ever sat down and started talking about food yeah. and started talking about your background, um, it was something that was really clear to me in in your food is that your the food and and I think a lot of it comes from your mother and comes from growing up and having food that is really rich in flavor and is very diverse in in background um, and but still is really well balanced and so that it's not too sweet or it's not too acidic and. I think the part of the book that's really that you that you did a great job with is simplifying that is really hard because it's actually easier when you do have more ingredients to play with. And I know in writing a book that you they're, they're always telling you to simplify the recipes. And um, and then when you do have a few more ingredients to play with it, it does help to balance like, you know, to to have really bold flavored food mm -hmm. that's well balanced. Does that, you know, um, can you just a little bit kind of talk to me about or talk to everybody about, um, you know, how that that real balance that you actually have in your food? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll never forget. We were at um, your restaurant, Michael Mina. <laughs> um, and Can you rename that? <laughs> no, it's awesome. We um, I sat down and I asked you, like, what are the keys to a great meal? How do you, I, I think I was eating your, um, it was like your Wagyu, it was, it was so good, whatever, it was so good. But I was like, what, how did you do this? Like, what are the keys? And you said acid, sweet, salt, fat. And so I took that home. I was right towards the end of, of writing the book. And I was like going through everything. Okay, where's my acid? Where's my salt? Where's my sweet? Where's my fat? And like, <laughs> if it wasn't there, I, I tried my best to fix it. Um, but it, it really does, it does change the dish. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes it balanced. And I feel like it's okay to, my whole thing is like, it's okay to play with salt content. It's okay to play with flavors and not to be afraid of that. Like go to the grocery store, uh, walk down the aisle, pick up something. If, you, if you've never used it before and it, and it looks interesting, pick it up and try it. Um, there's no harm in doing that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, just, just for all of you to understand a little bit about, um, you know, um, our kind of Aisha and my relationship with food, I think that that's kind of what drew us together is the style of food that you cook and what you were passionate about, what you even enjoyed in eating in the restaurant. And when we started talking about doing a project together, um, there, there was a lot of similarities, even though we obviously um, have different backgrounds, there was a lot of similarities in what we liked. And I think that that's always, whenever you're gonna collaborate on something, um, it's really hard to collaborate with somebody if if you have completely different styles or different thought process about about food. Um, it's you know very easy to collaborate when you're kind of on that same page of you know what you like in flavor. And so you know to me um, that was you know why International Smoke it, it even though it's um, only a few months old in the test kitchen 
the fun that we've been having, I think, yeah. with the food, it's been very natural in the sense that we just can kind of, you know, when we're talking about dishes, we end up going in the same direction a lot. Yeah, no, I think it's been it's been such a cool process. And like, how lucky am I to like be able to work under one of the biggest chefs in the world? Um, But what I (laughs) but what I love about you is that, I mean, you'll you'll cook with foie and you'll like you you, you have your trios uh, at Michael Mina, but he loves a good burger. And I think (laughs) that that is awesome. I love the balance. And I feel like you agree with me in the fact that like food need you need balance. Yeah, well, especially with that food. I think yeah. International Smoked, I think what's what's really made it so special is that it's been really this no boundaries. Um, there's great foundation to what, you know, whether it's whimsical and it's mm-hmm. okay, let's do a fun play on chili and do, you know, Thai chili that's really in quotations because it's not real chili, yeah. but it's fun and it's whimsical and that's totally you. Uh, or you know, jerk chicken, I mean, jerk turkey, which is in your book, and then how do you make it look like you're gonna want to serve it in the restaurant? Yeah. That's been the funnest part for me, I it's think. It's been, it's been such a blast, and I love, I love that you guys are always willing to change things up <laughs> um, and tweak things. That's the beauty of the test kitchen, is that everything's like trial, rarely error. Yeah, but no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not even going to put that in the air. Um, but it's, it's great to be there to try things out. And it's, it's a way for me to learn my way around the kitchen and kind of just see how things are done. But the food's been phenomenal. I don't know if some of you have eaten there. Um, but the, yeah. yeah, there we go. But, <laughs> but the food's been great. It's been, everybody seems to enjoy themselves. Um, and it's been really nice playing around with flavor. Um, it's international smoke. So we have different things from different parts of the world. And I think that's what, that's, what's beautiful. It's just like, it's just like with food, how food brings everybody together. What's more family than a barbecue. Right. Um, and so that's, I think that's what connected us to yeah. do this. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, it, it honestly, like, um, at this point for me, it's as much as I love, you know, I still love being in any one kitchen or being in one restaurant every day, day in and day out. There's something magical about that. It's really fun to, you know, to see a concept kind of come to life. And, um, and you know, watching this where it really is you, it's your background, it's, it's, you can see all of those things kind of coming to life. But then in a way where you um, have, you have food that I think appeals to so many different people. And, and we've seen it. I mean, with International Smoke, it's been by far the most successful concept that we've done in the test kitchen. And um, thank you for that. <laughs> Big you. round of no, applause thank for you. that. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to get to some questions from the oh, audience. Fine. But before that, um, I just want to give a quick reminder. Um, you're listening to the Commonwealth Club of California radio program. Um, and our guest today is Aisha Curry, and I'm Chef Michael Mina. Oh, it's radio. <laughs> Hello, people yes, listening on radio. Live radio. <laughs> okay. All right, so some questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, the first question is help. Oh. Help. <laughs> My kids um, are tired of eating peanut butter and jelly and turkey and cheese for lunch. I need some fresh ideas that are more healthy. So my first thing would be put it on the table and tell them they have no choice but to eat it. <laughs> but we know that doesn't always work. Um, in the book I have, um, I don't know, who, who wrote this question? How old are your kids? Five and seven. Oh, yes. Um, so I, in the book I actually have awesome ways to take classics that we wish we could eat every day but probably shouldn't. Um, So I have a a chicken tender recipe in there and instead of doing your traditional breading or um, like flour dredge, it's um, covered in flaxseed, which is great and nobody can tell the difference. It makes the the chicken breast so tender and juicy and you just, you can't can't mess it up. Um, And so that's been a great way for me. But also my number one thing is just getting them with you in the kitchen when you're cooking. Um, there, there have been studies that show that if you cook with your kids, they're more apt to try what they had a hand in. Um, and so just give it a try, like get, give them a job to do. My sister actually um, got 
uh, my daughter some kid-friendly knives for Christmas last year, and they work amazing, and you don't have to worry. Um, they, they're able to chop. It's going to be rough. They're not, it's not going to look pretty. But they can do it themselves, um, and not only does it give it confidence, but I, I, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure they'll try it if they cook with you. <laughs> okay. That's great. The next question. Um, what was the most memorable part of, of making um, the seasons of life? The season of life, sorry. Um, the most memorable part, so I started the process like really digging deep, um, getting everything done right after uh, my daughter Ryan was born. And so I think that whole process was, it was grueling as a new mom, um, like a nursing mom, sleepless nights, the whole thing. It was like, there were some times where I wanted to give up. Um, but looking back, I can laugh at it now. It wasn't funny then. But, <laughs> look, but looking back, it was it, like, what a beautiful time. I was able to like fulfill my passion, to have my newborn with me and still accomplish something. And then now to see it with all of you and to look on social media and see people actually cooking the dishes, it's so fulfilling and rewarding. And it's just, it's honestly the most exciting thing. So I think yeah. just the whole overall process, I can't pick one thing. I, I mean, one of the things that, all, that stood out to me in the book, um, you know, is just seeing like the fam your family around the table eating together um, and the importance that that, 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 is, that has both in the book and in, um, and for you on a day to day basis, and and I think that like you know obviously your life has got to be absolutely insane with what you have going on plus all of the rest of your life. But taking that little bit of time, I mean that's you know my life has kind of been insane for many years, mm -hmm. and just getting that time to remind it, you know, to get your family to sit down to eat, how valuable is that? It's so valuable. It's what I did growing up. It's like the, the most like uh, memorable memory in my mind, um, just gathering around, whether it was for breakfast, dinner, whatever it was. It wasn't all the time, but at least it was sometimes. Um, and like, I'm sure I'm sure I'm the same as as a lot of you in here that have families. Uh, sometimes I have to pull teeth to get people to sit down at the table. Like I have to wrangle, I have to rally, I have to beg and plead. There might be a football game on or something and one person <laughs> wants to sit in front of the TV. I don't know who, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I, once, once it happens and once I get everybody there, it's so rewarding because we're able to talk with each other and enjoy the meal together and talk about our day. I feel like it's such a lost art that I yeah. hope to keep going. Um, and I hope the book inspires people to keep going and keep sitting at the table and gathering with their families. I think it's, it's so important. Yeah, I agree. Um, I hope I answered the question. I tend to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is yours and Riley's favorite meal to cook together? Oh, goodness. I'm sure she'd give a different answer than me. <laughs> um, she really loves baking. I, I, I know you. I know you started out as a pastry chef, Michael, <laughs> but I'm I'm a terrible baker. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so her favorite thing to do with me is make cupcakes, um, cookies, all of that good stuff. Um, but really, anytime I'm making dinner, she she get, loves to get involved. So it's really anything that we're doing. Anything. Yeah. S sweet, savory. She, she's on the sweeter side. Yeah. She's a batter eater. Yeah, um, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay, what is the best advice that your mom or sister ever gave to you? And it doesn't have to just be about food. <laughs> oh. Um, Ooh, this is a toughie because they're staring me right in the face right now. Yeah, that's putting you on the spot. <laughs> um, I didn't ask that. that was I, <laughs> I think the best advice um, they've both given me, especially through like recent times with social media and that type of stuff, it's been to always be myself and to be unapologetic for who I am and like not to. Yeah. Just be true to myself and not change. Um, I guess they think I'm pretty cool, for, so, <laughs> so not to change. <laughs> um, 
this isn't here. I'm going to ask this one, but oh. just because you just um, what you just said, social media, and mm -hmm. I think that you know people that don't know you, I think feel like they know you because of how you know how well you you do social media. I mean, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, I follow some, but I, I check a lot of yours all the time, and uh, just you know, just <laughs> like, I, I follow people that you know do that actually do a really good job with it. It's interesting to me. Um, you know, and obviously now you, you're, um, your popularity on social media is, is, you know, really unbelievable. But, you know, what, what's your feeling on it? And what are the, what are the positives, negatives? Um, well, it's so funny because with Instagram, I started posting on Instagram many years ago, and I thought it was just an app for filters. And so I'd post, <laughs> I'd have like the same or like five different poses of the same picture and it was like four different <laughs> filters and like I didn't know and so people and I also didn't know that it was like a public thing so people <laughs> I remember one of my little cousins was like why you keep posting the same picture with different filters what you? I'm like you can see that <laughs> I, so then I realized what it was and it was actually a great way because we're we at the time we were the only um people on both sides of the family living on the West Coast. So we had nobody out here. And all of our family was on the East Coast. And we have a pretty big family, especially when we combine the two sides. And so I would be sitting on the phone all day if I was trying to update everyone on what was going on. And so it was a great way for me to just keep, keep our family and friends updated um, and post pictures of the kids and like what we were doing. Um, and then it just turned into this big thing. Um, and before I knew it, I had a lot of people following along. Um, but the whole time I've been doing it, I, I don't think too much about it. Mm -hmm. I kind of just post whatever I want. <laughs> um, but it's That's been a funny. really, now it's a really cool way for me to connect with everyone. Right. And um, even with, I, I do a lot with No Kid Hungry. Yep. And so to be able to talk about that on social media and for so many people to be receptive of it, it really makes a difference and it makes a, it makes a change. And so I feel like social media is great for that. Sure. It's great for me doing something like advertising my book sure. um, yeah. or building a career. Uh -huh. um, but really, I just love it to connect with people. And I personally love it so I can see what other people are doing as well. Um, so, um, yeah, I feel like the negatives um, maybe are certain backlash for things that you, you say or do. Yeah. Um, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> good to <for> you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's really funny what you said about not knowing. Because <laughs> I had that's, no idea. <laughs> honestly, because it's so fun. Like, some of your posts are so fun, and they're so funny, and they're so just, you know, kind of goofy and just fun, you know? And I think that that's, uh, you know, people feel like they know you because of that, which is cool. Very yeah, cool. And, then, and then sometimes you have, like, the smize pictures. I get so much... C-R-A-P for that uh, at home from like our friends and family. They're like, why aren't you smiling? Why do you have to look so serious at the camera? It's hilarious. I love a good selfie though. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'll, th this is a question from the audience, but I mean, kind of, um, it was a question I had anyhow. So, okay. um, you know, obviously at this point now you are, um, it, your, your career is just starting to explode, and so you're getting um, you're so many. You're going to get approached in so many different directions for different things, and obviously keeping that mm -hmm. um, keeping that in mind as you move forward, but still being able to focus in to kind of um, be able to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. Um, and so at this point, I think things are starting to you know. Obviously, with the book right now, everything's going to explode. Um, so, really, when you start to look down the road a little bit, you know, and the question was, you know, what do you hope to accomplish in the next year or two years? Um, I hope to have an impact on on families. Um, again, just sending the message of togetherness and cooking together. Um, but on a broader scale, I guess. Um, creating a business for myself and being yeah. able to share the things I love, whether it be product or another book or something with everyone. Um, but more so personally, uh, finding that work home life balance, 
um, so that I can figure out how to, and this might be something that you never figure out, like how you know how people say you can never be prepared for parenthood, it just happens and then you gotta go with it. It could be like that, I might never figure it out, but I'd love to have like the work life, home life balance where I'm maximizing time and disconnecting. Um, I'm working on it, Yeah. But, that, but that's what I'd like. I'd like to see everything that I have now also be su still successful um, and for it not to fizzle out. Yeah, so. you will. <laughs> Good luck with the home life balance. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> it is fun though. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a fun one. Um, with now shifting away from summer, fall approaching, um, I, this is just completely related to food. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. Summer to fall. Um, you know, I, I'll take this a little one step further is um, looking at the different seasons, like what, what food wise, which season do you get most excited for? Um, oh, for sure, fall and winter. Really? Okay. I love uh, comfort food. Mm -hmm. I love hearty soups and stews. I love apple pies. I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love all of it. Um, so I, it's, it's when you can wear your leggings and your chunky sweater and not have to worry about putting on a few pounds. So like I, 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 I just love fall. But you, you're funny because you say, he, I asked him how he remembers what's fresh and what season, and he says that it goes by sports. So That's what'd right. you say, when, when it's baseball, it's corn season or something? Yeah. Is that? <laughs> yep. That's so funny. <laughs> That wouldn't work sports. for me because I don't know much about sports other than what I know, which isn't much. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Pumpkins. <laughs> that's basketball season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can basketball remember that starts, one. Orange, start. orange. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> orange basketball. Uh, <laughs> orange pumpkin. It, it's funny because, you know, actually, somebody, somebody told me this a long time ago that you can really tell a lot. Uh, when you ask people just like what is their favorite season of food, a lot of times it's similar to their personalities. It's interesting. Yeah. So what are you saying? You're saying I'm drab, gloomy, and rainy? No, I'm saying <laughs> warm. I'm saying <laughs> um, the fall is that fall is definitely that warmth and comfort. Oh, and thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Okay. Um, for um, what dish do you suggest for a new and inspired cook to start out with out of your book? Out of my book. Yeah. I would start with, I give the same answer every time and I feel like it's very redundant, but it's so honest and true to me. And that's my mom's brown sugar chicken. It's, oh, it's so, <laughs> it's so good. I grew up on it. It's completely overindulgent, but totally worth it. Um, and it's one of those things that you can make ahead and put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days, and when you go back to eat it and reheat it, it's just better because all the flavors have mended in the in the Dutch pot. It's so good. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, a couple of days or a couple of hours when you go back. <laughs> it doesn't last that long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, and be prepared to make it in like bulk because people will show up uninvited. <laughs> Okay, um, this is for both of us. What okay. makes a good cook a great chef? Ooh. <laughs> you got this one? I got it. <laughs> I got you, I got you on this one. Um, a good cook, a great chef. Um, you know, being a great chef, I think that there's, um, that's something that is really subjective. It's different in everybody's eyes of what makes a great chef. I mean. You know, your mother's a great chef. I mean, that's it, the reality is anybody that can cook food for you that makes you, you know, not uh, that makes it hard for you to put your fork down starts to to be, you know, like, how do you judge exactly what a great chef is? To me, I, I always go to, unfortunately, there's no quick, you know, there's no quick way to become a great chef. The reason that that your mom's um, uh, brown sugar chicken is such a great dish is because of repetition, repetition, repetition. And becoming a great chef takes really that repetition of cooking and 
um, and product. I mean, those are the two things that you just can't replace is product and technique. And so really studying, learning more about product and understanding products, what's the best product, what season of sports it is, <laughs> that's what's in season. Um, and then the technique of doing it over and over again. And that's why, you know, I think people, a lot of times when you're at home, something that you'll see people do all the time is, you know, when you go to somebody's house, they're gonna make that same dish or they'll make a dish um, and, it's, and they make it at their home over and over again. And I always tell people, when they do that, it's you know it's because it, they become really good at it. Like they know exactly which saute pan to use. They know exactly. They understand the timing because timing is such a big part of it. They understand that piece of it, and um, and it's real. You know, it's very it, the the stress part of cooking kind of goes away if you're making the same thing over and over again. The thing I always tell people is when you go to the store to buy all those products to make that dish, buy one other thing. Like if you're making a chicken dish. Buy something you would never cook. Buy a scallop. Buy five scallops. Don't make a dish out of it. Just sear them in a pan and, and eat them yourself. Just to like push yourself to always cook other things. Push yourself to not cook the same dish over and over again. You can become a great chef of one dish, but if you really want to become a great chef, you have to, you know, you really have to kind of understand um, the difference in, you know, cooking many, many different types of cuisine? I would say, um, from my perspective, I think passion and love go a long way because um, it, it's what like makes a meal great, don't you think? You Absolutely. Can, like, you can taste somebody who enjoys their job when you go to a restaurant. Like you can, you can taste the difference in the food. It sounds disgusting saying it out loud. Like <laughs> You can taste when somebody put a love in your food. Yeah, but yes. I feel like you... I, I feel like you can. You can. There's a difference. Um, and I think it, there's a difference in the way that you approach approach the food. Um, I just think passion and love go a long way. I agree. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Um, okay. Does Riley try everything you cook? <laughs> Most everything. I think my sister can uh, can attest to that. She's, she's usually willing to try something. Um, when I make it, um, but again, when she's cooking with me, she'll always try it, uh, which has been my key to getting her to tr actually try okay. new things. She's really into seaweed snacks right now. It's really uh, funny. funny, and she takes like the big strips, and she like I, I don't know if it's because it's messy, and she likes the mess that it makes, but she yeah. just loves them so much. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Random thought. <laughs> Diane's into that right now, my wife. Really? <laughs> we have them just our cupboards are filled with oh the my goodness. snacks right now. <laughs> um, okay, this, this is a great one. Um, what is your favorite food of all time, and what do you love to cook most? My food. favorite food of all time. Gosh. Let's narrow it down. Let's do... Yeah, let's narrow it. What's your favorite dish, and what's your favorite type of cuisine? Like, if you had one dish... Okay. Yeah. My favorite dish is my mom's brown sugar chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I really love it. I love <laughs> my favorite type of cuisine is Chinese food. I love it so much. I love like, I love, and I love yeah. like the hole in the wall, greasy spoon Chinese food uh -huh. spots, like the quick takeout. It's like, I can't get enough of it. It's so good. Have you been to, have you been to RNG lounge here yet? No. Oh, I gotta take you. I'll take you. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's big, but it's really good. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> sounds wonderful. Um, okay. Okay. What would you make for a special guest romantic meal, um, or for your husband at home? <laughs> <laughs> um. I would do, usually when we have a special occasion or something at home, I'm either doing a rack of lamb or uh, oh, the lamb great. chops that they're in the book, the balsamic lamb chops, mm -hmm. and I'll do it with like a bacon wrapped scallop, some um, ro <laughs> 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 roasted asparagus, the whole thing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Rack of lamb. That's and it's quick. Yeah. Back to the date, not, uh -huh. not in the kitchen the whole time. <laughs> Hear that? That's great. <laughs> um, 
okay, when you first brainstorm a new recipe, what do you think about, what, what do you think about first? Um, I think about nothing. So what will happen is, <laughs> what will happen is I'll go into the grocery store. I, I don't necessarily, I'll have my grocery list for the household for the week, but I'll go in and I'll see something, whether it's a new vegetable or a new herb, and I'll say, oh, I really want to try this. What can I put with it? And then I'll just walk around the grocery store and grab stuff and then go home and experiment. And sometimes it comes together great. Other times I'm like, why did I spend the money on buying this? This is what a waste. Um, but I feel like just like the willingness to experiment is how I come up with, with stuff I, I, on the fly. Or I'll see something on TV that inspired me and I'll say, how can I make it different? How can I make it better? Um, and so I'll try it that way. That's great. Um, this is a really good one. Um, how does your faith guide you in choosing, in choosing projects? So for me, um, and it's actually one of the reasons uh, why I stopped acting, um, I was getting, having to go in for things that like, I know it's acting and I know it's not me, but um, I was going in for things that I just, I didn't feel comfortable with or like morally for me, I wouldn't want my kids seeing, seeing this if it, if yeah, it was them. Yeah. And so I, I took a step back. And so my faith has a huge um impact on the decisions that I, that I make for my career. Um, you can't, you can't really get that crazy with food. Let's be honest. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> so it's been great, but now more so it's been, it's been more about the time management. Mm -hmm. And so it's making sure that whatever I am doing, I'm passionate about it. And if for some reason I don't feel passionate about it, it's a pass. Um, mm -hmm. cause I don't, I'm yeah. not, I'm just not willing to compromise anymore. Um, when it comes to time with my family, because it's precious, you can't buy it, um, but you mm -hmm. can make it. Uh, and so I, I try my best to just make sure I'm setting aside the time, limiting um, the amount of projects I take in um, and making sure that I'm completely passionate about them. That's great. Um, yeah, you're gonna, I'm sure you already get this, but it's just gonna continue to grow, I'm sure for you. And with, I, I mean, I think the hardest part is, you know, when you start to really understand like, the philanthropy side of it and you want to do everything mm -hmm. and, and, and every cause is mm -hmm. like, you know, almost every, everything you get approached about really. And it's, and it's, and it is, it's really hard to, yeah, it's really hard. And then, and then you have the people that like guilt trip you, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's the, really hard to, to we, weave your through. way through and figure out. Yeah. What and, what, yeah. and, and it takes time. You have to yeah. figure it out. But it, honestly, the, I mean, the, the one thing that actually is really great about our industry is you, you, you know, um, you can do it without, you know, there's so much that we are yes. able to do now without having to um, put so much of our own personal time into it. Yeah. And, and that, that helps. It helps make those decisions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what are three core values you instill in, in Riley and Ryan? Three core three values. values. They're still so young, so it's, it's the method in which I like relay the, the values is so different than I'm sure when they get to be pre-teens and teenagers. But as of right now, it's just being a nice person. Um, it goes a long way. Uh, looking people in their eyes, uh, talking to them, connecting with them, not looking away when you speak <laughs> to somebody, <laughs> which I struggled with for a long time, but I'm getting better at it. Um, again, our faith is very, very important um, to us. It's the base for everything that we do. So I'm trying to instill in them from a young age um, how important that is. Um, this is so funny because they're four in one. So it's like, and then manners. I feel like that's an important value. Um, being appreciative for things. Um, right now, with especially with my daughter, but my sister has, I have a niece, she's three. Um, just instilling in them the willingness to like share and to give. I think it's so important. It's something that is implemented from a young age. Um, and so that's what we're, those are the values we're trying to instill right now. It's, yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. 
Um, <laughs> was it yours? Oh, was it? <laughs> um, so, uh, I, like I said, I'm, I mean, obviously right now there's, m there's many projects that you're involved in. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about a few of them that, you know, um, right now are maybe high on the priority list? Or <laughs> yes. Well, obviously the book, The yes. Season Life, um, it's available everywhere now, which is so exciting. Um, I was in the airport. Was I in the airport? Where was I? Yes, I was in San Francisco airport. You and, saw your book? <laughs> and I saw my book oh, on the shelf, and it was great. so exciting because I've been so busy all week, so I didn't actually get to go to a store to see it. And I went there, and there it was, and so it was so exciting. And then we went to, I'm rambling, sorry. <laughs> and then we went to Target, and there was a sign for it, but it was sold out, um, which I guess is a good problem to have. But I really wanted to see it on the shelf. But there was an empty little slot, so that was exciting, too. That's so great. The, <laughs> the book is out. Um, and then, of course, the show, um, October 22nd. It, um, it's a Saturday early afternoon, I think at noon, which apparently is a great time slot for Food Network. So please watch. Um, what else? I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about and what I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> There's just, I guess, just in the near future, look out for like different products. And of course, International Smoke, yeah. where we're in our, we just put up reservations for our last month. That's right. Um, for October. It's I been a, an incredible run. Yes. Um, it's a great space. It's, it's cozy and mm -hmm. has a great vibe. And people have so much fun when they go. So if you get a chance, please go and try it out. So again, how many people have been? <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. So I, it's, it's that, that is really exciting. I mean, that's been, uh, that's, it, like I said, that's been such a great project. And, um, and, you know, I think that, uh, at, you know, w w as soon as we find a permanent home for it, it's going to be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Now, d do we, ha we have time for one more question. I'm going to have somebody stand up. Okay. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I got it. I <laughs> you got it? I got it. I'm such a bad liar. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so <laughs> since you're all here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's something that we're definitely looking into. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's a good it's a good note to end on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um well um Aisha, thank you so much. Are you kidding? For thank you. Being you thank you guys so time. much. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> And there's people up there too. That's incredible. Yeah. Hi, hi guys. Incredible. <laughs> so this concludes our session. Ooh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's so That's cool. <laughs> Last time I didn't get to do that. Somebody, I was on in your seat, so. Oh. <laughs> that was nice. Well, there you go. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank for your you time. guys.